Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. So just why is this hat matrix, which is a function of the explanatory variables in regression, why is it said to be a projection matrix of a vector onto the column space of x? Because if we write h is equal to vector 1, vector 2, all the way to vector n, then we would say that the H matrix here is a projection matrix of a vector onto a column space spanned by each of these vectors v1, v2 to vn, which is some function of x. So how can it end up saying that H projects it onto the column space spanned just by x? That's what we're going to address in this video. And to explain it we have to go back to the basics of regression. If you think about it, regression is like solving a system of simultaneous equations. So here's the explanatory variables, here's the vector of coefficients. We have to solve this for beta star. Now, and these are vectors. So it's, say, n by 1, this is, say, p by 1, and this is something. Now, if this x matrix is square and invertible, we know that we can just inverse this to get if x is square and invertible, we know that then beta star, the solution will be easy. You take the inverse of both sides, so it's x dash y. But to say that x is square is the same as saying you've got the same number of parameters as observations. Well, usually, you know, in regression data analysis, we have more observations than we have parameters to solve for. Also, the other thing is that, the other problem is that our y will not, all, all the observations in y will not lie in the column space of x. If I can draw this as a picture, let's say that this x then is column space of x. If y was here, if all the y's are in this here, then we're fine because we can always reach it. But sometimes, often is the case, that the y is not on the space spanned by the columns of x. It's here. So we can't actually solve this. It's Instead, if we're given x, we can try to solve the nearest point, call it y hat, to y. So in other words, instead of solving this guy, we end up solving a similar problem, y hat equals x, beta, now x is given, since this y has changed to y hat, this beta star is no longer beta star, it's some, another beta, let's call it beta hat. Now we can see from this then that y hat lies in the column space, column space of x, because it's expressed as a linear combination of x. The solution, then we want to find the solution now, what is the b hat that gets us to y hat. Well, the b hat we want to find is such that we want, on this here plane, to be as close as possible to y. So that's why this could be another y contender y hat, this could be another contender y hat. You can see then that the nearest point to y must be the point that is at right angles. That is the shortest path, isn't it? If we do this, that's longer than this one. If we do this to here, that's longer. So this is the smallest distance possible to, uh, if you're on, lying on the on the a column space of x, to y. But this here distance, since that's the vector y, and that's the vector y hat, this here vector must be y minus x beta i y minus y hat and since these are at right angles this is orthogonal this vector here is must be orthogonal to x in other words what we must have is by orthogonality x transpose y minus x beta hat equals to zero I just want to say a bit more about why it's x transpose as opposed to x it's because since this vector here is orthogonal to the space spanned by x, it the inner by definition the inner product of this guy 
y minus x beta hat and the inner product of any of any of these x's must be zero. This here is a vector, so it's n by one. This is n by one. So this is the inner product has to be zero. But to write this as zero is the same as saying if xi transpose, which now makes it a one by n row vector, times by y minus x beta hat, which is n minus one, is equal to zero. This is the same as writing it this way, and it's done for every column of x. So you can see then that this becomes this when we write down the whole lot of them expressed in matrix term. And that's how we get x transpose as opposed to just x. Multiplying through, we have x transpose y minus x transpose x beta hat must be zero by the orthogonality conditions. And you can see, if you just rearrange this, the solution for beta hat is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y and you've seen this before, this coincides with the OLS estimator for beta hat, which coincides with the MLE estimator when the errors are Gaussian. All right, so this is the solution. This here gives us the y hat, which is close as possible to the y. If we substitute beta hat back into here, we get that y hat is equal to x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose y and this bit here is what we call hy. But since, now we've finally got to the h, but since we said that y is in the column space of x, it must mean that this h is taking y into the column space of x. And that's why, that's how we sort of answer the question. Since y ha is in the column space of x, this h must be taking y into the column space of x. And so we've answered the question that y, explain why h is um, a projection matrix into the column space of x. Okay, hope that's been clear. Take care.